Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another episode on my YouTube channel. I'm going to pick back up with some of the slides that I presented uh, last month on uh, strategies for prevention of dementia, and I've just wrapped up explaining many of the risk factors for dementia, and I've talked about some of the um, ideas behind supplementing with various vitamins and what the evidence shows us um, regarding those topics. But today I'm going to talk about diet. This is a huge topic that comes up frequently and I'm always getting asked, you know, what things do I need to include in my diet to you know, decrease the risk of developing dementia. And uh, the fact of the matter is, as we all know, there are tons of diets out there. And my motto is that the best diet is the one that you can adopt as a lifestyle, the one that you can continue on. There are lots of extreme diets out there um, that may be good, but if you can only stand to do them for a few days or maybe a few weeks, then they're really not going to serve you much purpose in the long term. So I hope that these diets that I explained to you today um, will convince you that they're not only good for uh, preventing slash slowing cognitive decline, but they're also doable and they can be quite tasty too. So um, on this slide, you'll notice a few things. Um, I'm going to talk first about the Mediterranean diet. And as you can see on the right side of your slide, we've taken the food pyramid that you know we all learned in grade school and twisted it around a bit, you'll notice that it looks a little bit different. So up at the very top, um, we have sweets, um, but also meats, so red meats. Now, if you go a little bit lower, you'll notice that you can have a little bit more chicken. Um, things like cheeses and eggs and yogurts are there. Go a little bit lower, though, and you'll notice that from a meat perspective, the focus becomes more on seafood, so you'll see your shrimp and fish and mollusks in there. Um, and then at the bottom, you'll notice lots of colorful vegetables and fruits, lots of grains, whole grain breads, whole grain pastas, um, garlic, um, and uh, olive oil. And so notice olive oil rather than things like butter and margarine. And then at the very bottom, um, this is something kind of unique to this pyramid, is uh, stressing the importance of being physically active and you know enjoying meals with other people. And you'll also notice off to the side that um, wine, particularly red wine, is considered part of the Mediterranean diet, um, but that's certainly in moderation. Um, and I've talked previously about some of the risks that are associated with moderate um, alcohol use, so I'd refer you to uh, previous videos to get more details about that. Now on the left side of your slide, this is a figure taken from a study that was done in 2015, and they looked at the effect of the Mediterranean diet on a few aspects of cognition. So um, in the uh, group of columns on the left, we're looking at the effect on memory. The lightest blue column is associated with the Mediterranean diet plus extra virgin olive oil. The next darkest column is the Mediterranean diet plus nuts. And then the darkest column, or the dark green column, is the control diet, so no specific diet. And what you'll see here, um, if we focus just on the memory um, aspect of the chart, is that the composite score for memory um, went up in those with the Mediterranean diet, and those that were on the control went down. And uh, if you look at the next set of columns um, associated with frontal cognition, we saw the same kind of relationship. And again, in global cognition, so they took multiple measures of cognition, the control diet certainly performed m more poorly, but the Mediterranean diet, especially the one associated with extra virgin olive oil, um, performed better. So from this study, it appears that there is some benefit from the Mediterranean diet in terms of cognitive function. Now this is another look at uh, just the Mediterranean diet and kind of uh, just illustrates a few things that I've already talked about. Um, now 
This that I'm showing is a different food pyramid, and it's called the DASH diet. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of the DASH diet, and you'll see why here in a few minutes, but um, the DASH diet is not uncommonly recommended by our, our colleagues in cardiology. Um, it's supposed to help blood pressure um, and, and cardiovascular health. Um, and then, as you know, the Mediterranean diet has grown, grown in popularity, and we recommend that on the neurology side from a you know, stroke prevention uh, standpoint. But there was a study that was done in 2015 that wanted to compare these two diets and see which one uh, did better in terms of preventing or slowing cognitive decline. And what they actually did was put them together to try to find the most important points that could help cognitive health. And they came up with what you can see in the far right column, a diet called the MIND diet. Um, very clever. So it would have been unfortunate if they named the diet the MIND diet and it didn't actually help your cognition. So All right, so this graph is from that study from 2015, and it's looking to compare the MIND diet, the Mediterranean diet, and the DASH diet. This first figure, um, I want to orient you a little bit to it. The, on the x-axis or the horizontal axis, we have time. And on the y-axis, or the vertical axis, we have an estimate of cognitive function. So if you're closer to 1, then that's normal. And then, as you can see, following the stair step down, that's really indicating how rapidly cognition declined. Now, there are three lines here. And you'll notice that there's a dotted line, and those refer that line refers to individuals that followed the DASH diet to the T. They followed it perfectly. Now, the solid line are those individuals that attempted to follow the diet, but maybe didn't follow it perfectly. Maybe there were some slip-ups there. And then the dashed line are those people that didn't follow the diet at all. And what you'll notice is that of those individuals that followed the diet perfectly, the dotted line, there was a slower rate of cognitive decline. Now looking at a similar graph corresponding to the Mediterranean diet, you'll notice a similar relationship. Those that followed the diet well, the dotted line, showed a slower rate of cognitive decline. And again, you'll notice for the MIND diet, those that followed the diet the best, the dotted line, showed a slower rate of cognitive decline. But those that followed the diet pretty well, maybe not perfectly, also showed a pretty uh, reduced rate of cognitive decline compared to those that weren't following the diet at all. Now, this can be a little bit complicated to digest, so um, I want to focus on these endpoints here so that you can understand uh, the argument that I'm going to try to make. So it helps if we kind of look at things upside down. So I've taken data from that trial so that we can look at it upside down. On the left, you'll notice the Mediterranean diet. And the higher the lines are, um, the more risk there is associated with dementia. And the lower is associated with a less risk. Now on the Mediterranean diet, you'll notice that there's a green line at the very bottom. Those are the people that followed the diet perfectly. And if you look across the Mediterranean, the DASH, and the MIND diet, all of those green lines are pretty much at the bottom, okay? Now, if you look at the red lines, which are really those people that didn't follow a diet at all, they're all associated with more risk of, of dementia. Now, what I really want to draw your attention to are those yellow lines. Those are the people that maybe weren't following the diet just perfectly, but they were following the diet. They were making an attempt. Of all three of those diets, the, those that did that with the MIND diet were the only ones that showed a significant slowing in cognitive decline. So what does this mean? This means that if you're trying to find a diet that maybe you don't have to be perfect at, maybe you might slip up every now and then, um, you don't necessarily have to be anal about getting every single detail right. It's more amenable to adopting as a lifestyle. The mind diet is the one that you want to adopt. 
And so um, I want you to pick up with me at the next episode, and I'm going to talk to you about what's in the Mind Diet. Also, guys, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Drop some comments and questions. A lot of you have contacted me uh, personally, and that's great, but um, many of the other people that are watching these videos um, might benefit from the answers that you're getting. So I would encourage you to post on, um, on YouTube directly, and that way we can build up a dialogue. Also, don't forget to hit the notifications button so that you'll be notified every time that I upload a new video.